I just stripped the resource pack that makes the portal screen. Huh. It's just an end gateway block. The beam and the particles, this had, they had to be done through modding. You can't oh. tweak the particles right now in the resource packet. But rifts, it's not a new 1.17 feature. Sorry to disappoint. But that was an April Fool's video, if you didn't notice. So if you come here from the future, it's April the 3rd, and I'm now following up my April Fool's video that you should watch first, okay? Nemon here, by the way. Hi, guys, and welcome. The good news is that the Rifts is actually a thing. It's actually a Scarpa tab that I spent last month working on that uses the new data pack creation ability of Scarpa, and it works in 1.16.5 as well as the recent 1.17 snapshots. It's a little experimental to be able to add dimensions mid run, and if you pair it with a very much so experimental feature from Moyang of custom dimensions, it gives you an experiment on top of an experiment. So, <laughs> it is what it is. So the process of installing it and the options you have with it, I'll show a little bit later. But first of all, it comes with a command. Slash rifts list will give you the full list of the custom dimensions that you have opened and the locations of the portals for you. With rifts locate, it works more like a vanilla locate command where you can track where the closest five rifts are in the reasonable distance around the player, within 2000 blocks away. But what you can do, what you cannot do with vanilla is to change the chances for the rift portals appearing with the rift chance command. I'll leave it on by default for 0 0.15, which gives typically one or two portals in the player's reach, which might be a little too frequent of what was really a vanilla feature, but you can all always change it to your liking. For example, changing it to one will always give you a portal if, if the chunk is right, which will spawn them in a two by two chunk grid. With 005, that would make it rare enough that it would likely be the vanilla setting for that. But if you change it to like 0 0.02, you might get just one or two in a full 2000 by 2000 block area, but I guess if you want to try it out, you would want them to appear rather more often, even if you want to try them in survival, which actually is super fun. In terms of some of the survival aspects, you need to spend emeralds in order to use a portal to go there, but it's actually free to go back. And also you need gold nuggets for the dimension clues, which I think is really cool feature to you, allow you to do that before you go through. So there's like 12 different designs of the portals you can get of the like of, let me find it, like just, just cobble, like this one, and to the super fancy one, like this one. The reason for this super fancy one is also for survival aspects, meaning that as long as you get uh, your first iron pick, which is actually quite difficult task after the recent changes to ore distribution, so with an iron pick, you'll be able to get the first stack of emeralds and there's several stacks of gold nuggets to get you going with the other portals. So where's the rest of the emeralds? I guess it's just on the other side of this portal. Portals are always paired so that the portal or the other side is using the same design. So if you're checking the rifts up in creative, there is actually a chance that you might punch out the gateway block. So don't try to set it back on using the set block command because there is actually more to it. And for that, use the rifts create command, which will actually spawn a functioning rift gateway in that spot. In my previous video, I told you there sometimes is a villager guardian spawning with uh, the rifts. The thing is with the village and pillage update, every type of a villager got their workstation block, which is their point of interest type in the point of interest system. That is in short, allows for quickly find the blocks without scanning through all the chunks. It's used with villagers first, but then it's also it's used with portals, which makes them not laggy. It's used with bees and for the same reason for lodestones. So what Moyang did is they added all different workstations for all the villager types, except for the unemployed and nitwits. But they actually did that point of interest type for them as well, even if they are not used anywhere really in the game. So what I used here, apart from the end gateway, which is just used to interact with the emeralds and the player, I'm actually assigning it to the unemployed type of workstation. And 
just noticed one, one day that unemployed villagers just started working on those portals when they are nearby. So I thought it's a really cool effect that the villagers not only won't leave that place since they are actually attached to their workplace, but also will occasionally do some work like any other villagers or any other workstations. You can actually use Rifts Create to spawn new Rifts in Creative. Just be mindful that Rifts created within the same chunk will be pointing to exactly the same dimension and that the aquatic portals will actually place some of their altar blocks to attach the vines back to them. So just be mindful of that. Even those custom place portals will always rip the rift apart when uh, creating the new dimension. It's here mostly for the effect, but also gives a hot second for the game to lag out and generate the new dimension and preload it while you see all that spectacle coming. I think the ripping apart effect turned out pretty good. The land crevices it forms turned out real good, Imho. Maybe open one more. Let's maybe check the water vortices. Vorti? Yeah, with these the heat action is more angular and than centrifugal and the effect is pretty great as well. The rifts, apart from the act of creation and spawning in the world, and all the other bells and whistles, are actually pure vanilla custom dimensions, and you will find one data pack per dimension for them in your data packs folder afterwards. And that's also how they are loaded. And this also explains why the next time you'll be entering the same world will actually ask you if you want to enable them, since it is an experimental feature, so you have to agree on that. But that means that you actually don't need any mods, no carpet mod, no rifts app to actually run them later on. As long as you have created them already with the rifts app, you can now grab this world and just run it with vanilla game and vanilla server and all your dimensions that you have open will still be there and be fully functional because it is a vanilla supported feature. Now, if you know upfront that that's what you will be doing, I highly recommend you set the rifts TP commands to true, which when you activate the rift with it, will actually place a vanilla teleport command at each rift portal that will teleport entities from the rift to that new place, the same way as doing it with the emerald thing, just without the particles. So next time you actually load the save with pure vanilla game, you can just put a button somewhere here and just still be able to go back and forth. As long as the custom dimensions are supported, they should work. Like so. The last command I would like to show is Rift Explained. I will actually list all the modifications or steps that have been applied to the world, including the setting a custom world type, some extra features, etc. One important thing to mention, custom worlds is still a very experimental thing, especially if you randomize them rather than handcraft them. And the more with randomization you go, the greater chance it's that it will be laggy or straight up crash your game. While working on this project, I submitted so far four bug reports pointing out where current vanilla world generation causes the game for straight up crash. You shouldn't have too many problems creating many, many custom worlds as far as my testing have gone, but I feel I needed to point it out the custom dimensions by themselves is a very experimental feature and it's not yet fully supported. So before you create a new rift or open a new rift, I highly recommend you just press the escape button just to save your world at this point. And then if the custom dimension is crashing on you, just close the game uh, then go and remove the last dimension if, if it's still crashing it and then when you're back in the game just block the portal in the world and just never go there again one thing that you can do to help is when you type rift explain and just send it over to me or even send that particular data pack to me over discord this way i can have a look at it and block certain features that can render the world unplayable or if it's crashing the game we can just let Moyang know that their custom dimensions feature still needs work. All these custom data packs should technically be working just fine if the game accepts them. There are two ways you can run the Rifts app. First is just by app itself, just placing it in the world scripts folder and restarting your world like any other Scarpet app. And that's it. In this format, the app will be shuffling as much as it can, different world types, biome, general settings, customized structure density in the world, 
things like custom C level as well as modify the main blocks in the world. But that's it. To unlock the full customizability of other parameters, including crazy custom biomes as well as custom world heights in 1.17, you need to provide with the vanilla game world gen JSON files, which you can find in GitHub repo of SliceLime, the tech lead for the Java team. And you just need to add the version number to the file name and just plop it in the shared data folder in the scripts right next to the Rifts app. I included for your convenience the 1.16.5 as well as the 1.17 version in the description for, well, for you to download. 1.17 version will likely be frequently changing, but you should be able to just grab the most recent one of Slice 9 GitHub repo and just replace it with the previous one. So I'll try to keep it updating as 1.17 goes if there is still an interest. In terms of the world types you can get, first is a single biome with relatively standard vanilla settings. I'm not saying that it's not going to be crazy, but it should feel relatively familiar. These are actually quite rare to come by, because they are, tend to be quite boring. The next general variant is the checkerboard part, and the same as the above, but now we have a few biomes organized in a grid alternating from plot to plot. The third is the multi-noise type, which is a generator that you can find currently in the nether. However, with fully customized biome composition and layout, this, while still standard, can get quite crazy and interesting. On its own, that would be enough variability for crazy custom worlds, but there is actually more than that. The last one is a funky biome type. It's one biome, but it can have all sorts of things tuned up. Custom mob spawns, all the calls of rainbow, foliage, water, fog, extra custom structures, extra decorations features, as well as some custom features that are hard-coded in, like blobs of stuff. The thing is, it's only enabled right now in 1.16, because custom biomes right now is just extremely buggy and broken in 1.17 and needs fixing, so I disabled that in the app, but if you feel like you want to try it out in 1.17, I guess you can just tweak it in the app to enable it. Speaking of tweaking of the app, you can find all the sources for Rift's app on the GitHub of this Carpet App Store. And if you just want to tweak something, add more cool custom features that could be planted with these worlds, or just add some extra customizations that you think it's, it's appropriate and fun, and have some experience with either Carpet programming or programming in general, feel free to suggest that to the repo. The crazier they will get, the better. So far, the app only has, honestly, just a few basic settings for dimensions to randomize and a few basic shapes, like orb blobs or diamond shapes of blocks. What it does have is a good framework to add actually more of these as options, and that's where you can contribute. I would like to also thank Starmute for his input and expertise on custom world generation and help for getting all of this done. So that's all what I guys have for you today. Sorry to disappoint if you thought that the infinite custom dimensions are coming to vanilla game, but you can still bring them to your vanilla world using Scarpet and the Rifts app. So if you have enjoyed what you have seen, don't forget to leave me a like, leave me a comment in the comment section below, use the links provided in the description for the download for the app, and see you in the next one. Bye bye!